Okay, so today we're going to be talking about post rendering uh, for just kind of processing an image uh, for exteriors out of Revit. Um, as you can see, so this is an, an image um, that I've rendered of, of a home that there, I don't do a lot uh, as far as plants or anything like that in actual Revit. The grass that's in Revit is absolutely terrible. The trees that are in Revit are really kind of pixelated and kind of fuzzy and aren't great. Um, so, as well as the sky, to be honest. So, I prefer to control a lot of that and um, make the exteriors look a little bit nicer than what I can get out of Revit, as opposed to the interiors. I'm perfectly happy with how those look. The exteriors, I'm usually not too happy with how those can come out. So, essentially, when this, when this comes out, um, I've just got uh, a sun, um, kind of lighting condition on this and the sun in Revit does cast kind of a yellowy haze over everything so the first thing that I do is I come up and hit uh, hue and saturation and I'll come into my yellows and just kind of take some of the yellow uh, out of it so like 35 works pretty well because this stone is a little more of the tans and grays um, if I get up a little bit closer you can see kind of the if I get really close, you can see the, the kind of stone that we've got on there. But we're standing back so far that um, the bump map I wasn't super concerned with because when we're back as far as we are, uh, as long as you can tell that stone, that's all that really matters at this point. Um, the other thing that I always do, as I mentioned in my interiors, is throwing on this line work. So as you can see, it, I've exported the, just the model view um, if I throw this on normal, 100%, I've just got the, the model model view. I export at the same size as the image, file, place, and it overlays perfectly. I throw it on a multiply layer and then start decreasing the opacity to where I want it. You can see it, once you get down into, we'll say like the, on this image, maybe like a 30, 30, 33 works pretty well. So if I turn that on and off, it just kind of punches up the edges of absolutely everything um, and just kind of makes the image a little more crisp uh, where I want it to be. So once I've, once I've got this, this image, you can see some other things that I've done. Uh, I've got all of my pathways as like a darker gray. Um, that way I kind of know where that's gonna fall. And the other thing I've done is I've kind of put in some planter beds um, that way the perspective, I can see kind of how those are going to lay out, how much room I've got. That way I don't end up building a whole bunch of plants and stuff way out into, into this space. Um, but other than that, I've got my topo surface as a white material. The reason it's white is because when I render that, anything that I put on top of it in Photoshop, I can just throw on a multiply layer and then any shadows that happen to be cast on that white surface show through onto whatever layer I've got so I get the perfect shadows on everything that I'm doing there. So to start, um, I usually have a, kind of a background that I'll, I just Google image search for different stuff and start picking out pieces of it and throwing those back and forth. So the first thing I, I've got is just kind of a, a set of trees and obviously that doesn't look great right there but as I get into more and more of the layers it'll start to dissipate. A little bit. Um, the next thing I always search for is field of grass. That's the exact ser search term that I put in and I search for the biggest image that I can get that just has a large swath of grass and I'll grab pieces of that and then throw it into my model on a multiply layer. So basically I've just grabbed a huge chunk of grass from an image, throw it on multiply and put it in there. And then from there it's just piecing together, you know, there's another piece of grass, and then the sky, um, I'll just throw in there, that's probably a little too blue, I'm not a real fan of that, so maybe I'll take the saturation on that down just a little bit, and maybe I'll lighten it up just a touch, so maybe something like that. And then from there, it's a matter of image searching and building up a library of trees and flowers and all of that sort of stuff. If you find a good size image that has a bunch of flowers in it, um, I would recommend saving it and then just 
you know, cropping out a little piece of it, saving that off to the side. But um, you'll see this little piece is the, the sky within the, the kind of backside chimney there. And then I just start building up um, different things. So this is the shadow. I'll basically take this tree that I've got and then copy it, put it behind it, and decrease the like lightness on it all the way so that it's just black and then decrease the opacity and hit a filter blur gaussian blur and blur the edges so that way it, it kind of sits in there where where i want it to um and then basically from there it's just going through and building up piece by piece throughout the entire thing um it does take a quite a bit of time um to figure out how all of this is kind of going to go together. I am by no means a landscape architect, so don't judge me on my landscaping abilities. Um, but I just start throwing stuff in there. Um, if we have a landscape plan, I might search for those exact plants and put them in as best I can. But for this one, we didn't have anything. This was kind of a, a preliminary at the time. Um, and so I just start pulling in all sorts of uh, plants and all of that. So if I go through absolutely everything this image ends up being something kind of like this if you zoom in really close it's not going to look really great but the image the presentation quality is decent at the size that it was printed at um, so like like I said if you get in real close you're seeing all sorts of the, the goofy edges and everything but I'm also at a hundred and seventeen percent right now this hundred percent isn't what I was actually uh, printing this at I always make my images quite a bit bigger than what I'm going to be printing them at uh, Just for resolution sake. Um, I probably ended up printing this somewhere in the size of about that um, so That gives you kind of an idea of a rough idea of kind of how I build up an exterior But it does take time um, I'll tell you this image took me quite a while to kind of process and put together. I'm not the best in Photoshop by any means, so Photoshopping stuff does take me a little bit of time. I think this one probably took me four or five hours of processing and everything just to find the images and, and kind of stick stuff in there um, and get it to a point that was decent enough to show a client. So uh, when you're doing exteriors, I tend to start with something pretty pretty bland like I said if we get rid of all of this stuff um, back to kind of what we started with it's pretty bland and then you just kind of build the whole thing up you start with the line work and then from there you're just piece by piece uh, kind of increasing the quality of, of what you got um, and trying to do as best you can to create the photorealism that you want out of the entire thing so uh, that's a, a brief overview of um, of exteriors and kind of processing an exterior. It's a lot more intensive than interiors if you want a similar quality. But like I said, um, it's up to you what what quality level you want to shoot for. Uh, to me, the Revit grass, the Revit trees aren't where I would like them to be. So this is kind of the the avenue that I've got. Uh, to make that happen unless I wanted to take it into an entirely different set of software and do all of the landscaping and stuff like that in that software but um, to me this is quicker and easier and I also don't have to learn an entirely new set of software and purchase that software to get to that point so um, that's a little overview of processing exteriors